The plot below is a Lissa Juice figure created with the parametric equations x of t equals a cosine bt and y of t equals c sine dt. We want to find possible positive values for a, b, c, and d. So first notice how the x values are controlled by the cosine function and the y values are controlled by the sine function. And we should already be familiar with the basic cosine function graphed here in red as well as the basic sine function graphed here in black. Notice for both the cosine and sine functions, the maximum function values are positive one and the minimum function values are negative one. So by looking for the maximum minimum x value, we should be able to determine a, and by determining the maximum and minimum y value, we should be able to determine c. Remember the absolute value of a and c would be the amplitudes of our cosine and sine functions. So to help us determine A, we'll project the graph onto the x-axis, and notice how if we do this, the minimum x value would be negative four, and the maximum x value would be positive four. And therefore, A, if we're using a positive value, would have to be positive four, meaning our cosine function would have an amplitude of positive four. So we know that x of t, would be equal to four times cosine of bt. And now if we project our figure onto the y-axis, notice how the minimum y value would be negative five, and the maximum y value would be positive five, and therefore c would be five, meaning the amplitude of our sine function would have to be five. So we know that y of t equals five times sine dt. Now looking at our equation so far, remember b and d affect the period of our cosine and sine functions. Where if we have y equals sine b theta, or y equals cosine b theta, the period would be equal to two pi divided by b, and the frequency would be the reciprocal of the period. So what we'll do is trace out the figure and determine how many cycles of the cosine function, which control x, and how many cycles of the sine function, which control y, it takes to trace the entire figure. Before we do this though, let's determine the point on the figure when t equals zero. Well notice when t is zero, x would be four times cosine zero, which is four, and y would be equal to five times sine zero, which is zero. So when t is zero, we'd be at this point here, four comma zero. So notice how if we start here, in order to trace this figure, we'll have to backtrack, and therefore we'll determine how many cycles of cosine and sine it takes to trace this twice. Let's begin by focusing on the x values of our figure, and looking at the basic cosine function, notice how at an input value of zero, we're at a maximum, and then once the function value returns to the maximum, it represents one cycle of our cosine function. So in this case, our maximum is four here. So as we trace the figure in this direction here, notice how the function values decrease, reach a minimum value of negative four, and from here we have to backtrack, and as we begin to backtrack, notice how we go back to a maximum function value, which is four, so this represents one cycle of our cosine function, and now we'll continue tracing in this direction, where we reach a minimum x value of negative four, and then we backtrack again to a maximum x value of positive four. So notice how it took two complete cycles of our cosine function to trace our figure twice. So if we wanted to trace this twice where t is between, using, t, using the interval for t from zero to two pi, Notice how the period of x of t, notice how the period of our cosine function would have to be two pi divided by two, and therefore b, the coefficient of t, would be two. So we can say that this is equal to four times cosine of two t. Again, this is assuming that we're using t values to trace our figure twice from zero to two pi because b and d are not actually unique, but their ratio is, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So now we'll trace our figure again, focusing on the y values to determine how many cycles of the sine function it takes 
to trace our figure. And again, because we're backtracking, we'll trace it twice. But before we do this, let's take a look at the sine function. Notice how when the input is zero, we start at a function value of zero. And we have to return to the function value of zero, not once, but twice, to make one complete cycle. So again, we're tracing, focusing on the y values. So notice as the input increases, the sine function values increase. And they'll reach a maximum value of five. So we would go from here to here. And now we'll start to backtrack. As we backtrack, notice how we reach a y value of zero once. But again, we have to reach this y value twice for one complete cycle. So we keep tracing. Here we're at a minimum y value of negative five. And we start backtracking. And we're back to zero a second time, which represents one complete cycle of the sine function. And therefore, the period would be two pi divided by one. And therefore, in this case, d would be one. So we have y of t equals five sine of one times t, or just t. Now, as I mentioned earlier, b and d are not unique, but the ratio is. Meaning as long as b is twice the value of d, we would still trace this figure twice, but it would be a different interval for t. Another way to say that would be that as long as the period of our cosine function here is half of the period of our sine function here, it would still create this graph. It's just the interval for t to trace the figure would change. I hope you found this helpful.